I came across this thing by accident. It looked fake like a plush toy someone lost in a tide pool, but it's real. It's called the leaf sheep slug, and it's one of the strangest animals in the ocean. Imagine someone crossed Sean the sheep with a head of kale, then shrunk it down to the size of a grain of rice. That's more or less what we're dealing with here. It was first discovered in 1993 off the coast of Kiroshima, a small island in southern Japan. Since then, it's been found in other warm, shallow waters around Indonesia, the Philippines, and parts of Australia. It lives on algae-covered rocks and coral, blending in so well, most people wouldn't notice it unless they were looking for it. But what it does is the part that really breaks the rules. Like most sea slugs, it eats algae. But this one doesn't just digest it, it keeps part of the algae, the chloroplasts, which are the little green structures plants use to turn sunlight into energy. Instead of breaking them down, the slug stores them in the fronds on its back, those leafy little spikes that make it look like it's wearing a woolly sweater. Then, it uses those chloroplasts to photosynthesize. Basically, it turns itself into a solar-powered animal. It uses light to make energy, just like a plant. Scientists call this process kleptoplasty, which literally means stealing plastids. Plastids are the parts of plant cells that handle things like making and storing energy. Chloroplasts are one type. So when the slug keeps those chloroplasts, it's basically hijacking a tiny piece of the algae's machinery and using it for itself. It's rare. There are a few other sea slugs that do it, but none do it as efficiently or as visibly as the leaf sheep. It can survive for days, even weeks, just using sunlight. No eating, just light. No one really knows how it avoids digesting the chloroplasts by accident. That part's still a mystery. And that's kind of the theme with this list. The ocean is full of creatures that don't make sense. Not in the way we think life is supposed to work. This is just one of them. You'd probably swim right past this fish without noticing it. It hides in cans, bottles, and little holes in the seafloor. Just a small, twitchy thing with bug eyes and a nervous look. But if you get too close, it opens its mouth and turns into a monster. This is the sarcastic fringe head. And when it feels threatened, it explodes its jaws outward into a massive, neon-colored display. It goes from awkward little goblin to deep-sea xenomorph in about half a second. The name sounds made up, and it kind of is. Fringe head comes from the frilly little fins above its eyes. The sarcastic part? That's just what the scientists called it probably because it always looks like it's side-eyeing you. They live off the west coast of North America, from California down to Baja, California, usually in shallow water. They're small, about 20 to 30 centimeters long, but they're aggressively territorial. Most of the time, they hide inside narrow holes or empty shells with just their head sticking out. But when another fringe head shows up or anything gets too close, they throw themselves forward, open their jaws wide and try to slam their face into yours. It's not just a threat display, it's a jaw duel. Two fringe heads will literally push their open mouths together like a violent unhinged kiss until one of them backs off. The jaws are massive compared to their body and when opened, they create a bright semicircle that makes them look twice as big. It's all about intimidation. They don't actually wanna fight. They just wanna scare you into not starting one. There's nothing venomous, nothing deadly, just a ridiculous high effort bluff that weirdly works. And it's kind of the opposite of the leaf sheep. That one survives by blending in. The fringe head survives by making a scene. If the ocean had a superhero, it might be this thing. The mantis shrimp is small, about the size of a finger, but it punches harder than anything else its size on the planet. It doesn't just strike fast, it hits with so much force that the water around its claw literally boils for a split second. That's how fast we're talking. The mantis shrimp uses a special kind of limb called a raptorial appendage. It's basically a spring-loaded hammer that winds up and snaps down in just a few milliseconds. 
scientists have measured strikes at over 20 meters per second. That's about the speed of a bullet from a handgun. Some types of mantis shrimp can crack snail shells and even break aquarium glass. And it gets weirder. The mantis shrimp also has one of the most complex visual systems ever discovered. Its eyes can move independently, and they can see things we can't even imagine. Humans have three types of color receptors in our eyes. Mantis shrimp have 16. They can detect ultraviolet, infrared, and polarized light. It's like having built-in camera filters no one else has. No one is totally sure why their eyes are this advanced. Some researchers think it helps them pick out prey hidden in coral or spot predators in tricky lighting. Whatever the reason, it's completely over the top for an animal this small. There are over 400 known species of mantis shrimp, and they come in two main types. Some are smashers, like the ones with the powerful punch. Others are spearers, with sharp barbed claws for stabbing soft-bodied prey. Either way, they're fast, brutal, and weirdly precise. They don't look like much at first glance, but the closer you look, the more it feels like nature gave this animal everything it needed to become a tiny underwater tank. You don't expect a shark to be this small. The cookie cutter shark only grows to about half a meter. It's not fast, it's not strong, it doesn't have big teeth or scary jaws, but somehow it's one of the most unsettling predators in the ocean. Instead of hunting things down, it swims up, grabs on, and carves a perfect circle of flesh out of its target, then swims away. And what's left behind is exactly what its name suggests, a round cookie-shaped wound. These bites have been found on whales, dolphins, seals, tuna, even other sharks. Sometimes they're deep, sometimes they're clean through the skin and into muscle. There are even reports of cookie cutter bites on deep sea submarines and cables. It sounds fake, but it's very real. The shark pulls this off using a set of specialized features. First, it has thick suction cup lips that help it latch onto its target. Then it spins its body and uses a row of serrated lower teeth to slice out the flesh like a hole saw. It doesn't kill, it just takes a bite and leaves, which is somehow worse. They live in warm, deep ocean water, all over the world, mostly near the equator. During the day, they stay far below the surface, sometimes over 2,000 meters deep. But at night, they rise up to hunt in the mid-water zone. That daily vertical migration makes them hard to track, but the marks they leave behind are easy to recognize. One of the weirdest things about them is the way they use light. The cookie cutter has a glowing skin, bioluminescent cells that make its whole body glow green. But around its throat, there's a band of dark skin that doesn't glow. Scientists think this acts like a fake silhouette, kind of like bait. From below, a predator or prey might mistake it for a small fish, move in closer, and get bit. And while we've known about this shark for a while, we still don't fully understand how often it feeds how far it travels, or how it finds its targets in the dark. What we do know is that it's one of the only animals in the ocean that can take a bite out of a whale and get away with it. The last creature on this list doesn't attack anything. It just lights up, for reasons we still don't fully understand. At first, it looks like any other clam, just sitting there, stuck between some rocks. Then it opens up and starts flashing. Bright pulses of blue light, rippling across the inside of its shell like tiny bolts of lightning. This is the electric clam, and even though it's not actually electric, it definitely looks like it should be. What you're seeing isn't bioluminescence. It's not producing light. It's reflecting it, in a way that's completely unique. Inside the edge of its mantle, there are bands of tissue that switch between reflective and non-reflective states. When the clam opens and closes quickly, that contrast creates the illusion of moving light. Almost like an LED strobe, scientists believe it's one of the only animals that uses this kind of optical trick. It's not glowing, it's redirecting the ambient light around it to create a visual signal. It's also not fully clear why it does it. Some researchers think the flashing is meant to warn predators that the clam is unpalatable. 
Others think it might be a way to attract plankton or small prey into the shell. There's not enough research yet to say for sure. Electric clams live in warm Indo-Pacific waters. Places like Indonesia, the Philippines, and parts of the South China Sea. They usually stay tucked into crevices in coral reefs or rocky ledges, anchored in place by threads that keep them from being pulled out by the current. They're filter feeders, just like other clams, pulling tiny food particles from the water. But unlike other clams, they put on a light show while they do it. They're rarely spotted, not because they're rare, but because they're small and tend to live in hard to reach places. But if you do happen to spot one, it's hard to forget. And that's kind of the pattern with all of these animals. They're not the biggest or the deadliest, but they've each evolved something so strange it doesn't feel like it should exist. Thanks for sticking around. I'm always surprised by how many strange animals are out there that barely anyone talks about. Every time I think I've seen the weirdest one, something else shows up and makes me rethink that. If there's a creature you think I should check out either from the ocean or land, drop it in the comments. I'd honestly love to hear what's out there that I've missed. That's it for this one. If you're into this kind of stuff, feel free to hang around. I'll be posting more soon.